Hello, and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I'm going to be eating my words a bit. I wrongfully derided this film without giving it a chance, but I'm here to own up to it. And now, Jay and Silent Bob reboot. The movie, as you may know, is a quasi-sequel to Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, and also acts in its own right as a PS to all of Kevin Smith's former films, as well as being a reboot. As I mentioned at the start of this review, I was pretty much against this movie from the instant I heard about it. As a longtime Smith fan, I didn't really feel it was justified in existing. However, it is an entertaining look back at his previous films, and a decent PS to a couple of them. It does a really good job of poking fun at not only the comic book film culture, but also Hollywood's complete lack of creativity. Smith also pokes fun at his own nepotism, so I give him bonus points for that. Overall, it's pretty well shot, and some parts surprisingly look pretty good. There were no real instances of shaky camera, the picture being too dark, or looking like it was shot on cheap digital video, which it likely was. Admittedly, a lot of the jokes don't really work. The movie is also entirely too sentimental for my liking. However, considering everything Smith's been through in the past few years, and the fact that most of us fans have been watching his entire life play out on the internet for the better part of two decades, it definitely feels warranted. The cast is this movie's strongest point, and it is completely star-studded. Featuring Ben Affleck, Matt Damon, Joey Lauren Adams, former World Heavyweight Champion Chris Jericho, Method Man, and Redman, and even Thor himself, Chris Hemsworth. And to be honest, his cameo steals the entire show from him. However, a majority of the younger cast members are not so hot. The one notable exception being Trishel Edmund. I also want to make mention of the Stan Lee tribute. Apparently, Lee was supposed to have a much larger role in the film. However, as we all know, his untimely passing prevented this. I feel that Smith handled this in the best way possible, and I give him major points for this. The film does run about 10 to 15 minutes too long, but that's a minor nitpick. In closing, I'm here to say that if you're a fan of Kevin Smith and you've stuck it out this far through the Viewist universe, you really owe it to yourself to give this movie a watch. While you'll be hard pressed to find anyone saying it's his best film, you're currently hearing someone say it's far from his worst. Go ahead and give it a watch. Nah, but seriously, it's like a four.